Aldo from the Zero to Mastery Academy here. In today's tutorial, we're diving into a useful tool for building visually appealing websites, and that is Font Awesome. This isn't just any icon tutorial, it's part of Jacinto's complete CSS bootcamp course available on the Zero to Mastery Academy. So if you want to level up your styling skills like a pro, I strongly recommend you click the link in the top right hand corner or check out the description below for the full course. Alright, that's enough talking from me. Let me hand it over to Jacinto. Enjoy! Okay, so in this one we're going to be diving in to Font Awesome, which is an amazing icon library. I've been using Font Awesome since I first started web development. When I went to make my developer portfolio website, it was the perfect way to add social media icons to my project. Okay, so let's dive in. You might have remembered when I was creating the template that I used a CDN link to a Font Awesome 5 style sheet. So we're actually at Font Awesome version 6 now, and they have an even better way of adding Font Awesome to your project, and that is using a kit. So the main benefit of the kit is it allows for subsetting. And what does that mean? So instead of loading a style sheet that has thousands of icons, when I'm only going to use maybe five or maybe 10 icons, subsetting allows us to only load the icons that we're actually using within that page. So it will allow our site to load even faster. So we can do this by adding one line of code. It is going to be a script file. There are 26,000 icons in total, but there are actually 2,000 free icons, including all major brands. And if we scroll down, we can see that the other benefit is that we can have instant updates. So when there's a new version release of Font Awesome, by using this kit, it will automatically update and include those new icons. We have our simple syntax that is easy to remember to add our icons. And it also has some accessibility features that are automated into the icons to help with screen readers and compatibility. So you can see that it is the web's default icon set. It's used on over 200 million sites. They do have a lot of different icons here, and they are grouped into categories to make them a little bit easier to find. And they also have different styles of the same icons. So you can have a solid, a regular, a light, a thin, or even duotone. And you can see we have our brands icons right here. If we scroll down just a little bit more, we have a nice little playground here. So you can see that we have a duotone example and you see that we have our code snippet down here. I can go ahead and change this. We have a lot of different options here. And let's say we want our rocket here. We can also change the to be regular or light or solid or thin but we're gonna stick with duotone. We can change the color to be red or purple, and you see our code changing down here. And we can even change the size. We can also do this within our custom CSS, but it's nice that it offers the option to do that as well. Let's switch that to large. And we can even animate just by adding some different style classes from Font Awesome as well. So you can see we can have it scale up and down, we can have it bounce, we can have it flip, we can have it shake, and we can even have it spin. Okay, very cool. So that is the brief overview of the features of Font Awesome. Let's dive into actually using it. Okay, so we're gonna go back up to the top here and we're going to click on start for free. And what you will need to do, though, is you'll need to enter in your email to get started with your free kit and agree to the terms of service. I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. OK, so I'm signed into my Font Awesome account. I have my kit that I've already generated here. If you do not have one, 
you just have to click on the add new kit button up here and it will generate one and then you can rename it whatever you like. At the bottom of the page here, it is pointing out that I only have one kit that I'm able to use on a free account. As well, I can only have 10,000 page views per month from this kit. If I go over that limit, it will cut the icons to my website for the rest of that month, unless I upgrade to a pro account. But I don't think I'm going to get more than 10,000 per month. And if you are, you can probably afford the pro license. Okay, so we're going to dive into our kit. Just click on it here. And you can see that it is very easy to use this kit. It is just one line of JavaScript that we're going to copy into our project. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to put this in my code pen project. I'm going to add it to the bottom, my HTML file here, paste it in there. Okay. And that's it. I've added fun. Awesome to my project. Okay. And if we look at our icons tab here, you see that in the free account, we only have solid and regular and brands. So we don't have light, thin, or duotone. But that's okay. That will serve our purpose. The main thing we're going to be using is our brand icons. And in our settings, you can see this is where we can change our kit name. And you see that we're using free icons, we're using web fonts, we're using auto subsetting. Again, only loads the bits of the style that are necessary. It's using the latest 6x version. By having 6x, it means that it will keep updating that version 6 to the minor version updates that it has. It won't necessarily upgrade to Font Awesome 7. You probably have to use a new kit for that. And the kit is open in this case, which is fine, which means it can actually be used by anyone on any site. If I add a specific domain, which I would encourage you to do, then it will only work on that domain. Okay, so that's basically it for our settings here. Now we're ready to take a look at the icons. So we're going to go ahead and just click icons here at the top, and we can search for some icons. I'm just going to search for the Twitter icon, press enter, and I'm also going to sort by free just to show the icons that we will have access to. And you can see we have our new X Twitter icon here. That is one of the primary reasons we're going to be using the newest version of Font Awesome is this icon has changed recently. You might have noticed it in a lot of places. I did like the original Twitter icon quite a lot, but this is the one that is now appearing everywhere. And if I click on it, you can see that we have our code snippet to actually add our Twitter icon. And we can go ahead and just copy that to our project. But I want to also point out that it does enable you to do things like rotate 90 degrees. You see that it added an extra class there. I can change the default size to be large or two times XL. I'll put that back to default and no rotation. And we can even actually add in animations just by adding a class. So we just added the FA-Beat class, and it is adding an animation to our icon. All right, very cool. We're going to go ahead and just click anywhere down here to copy the code snippet. You see that it's copied. And we'll close this for now. And we're going to go to our Fun Awesome project, and we're just going to paste it in there. Okay, cool. So we have our X Twitter icon there. Awesome. So that's working perfectly. Let's go back to Font Awesome. And we're going to take off the Twitter filter. And we're just going to filter by free. So you see that we have our 2000 icons here. And I can filter by even what's new in version six staff favorites. And I also have all of these different categories. So childhood, clothing and fashion, coding. Let's go ahead and click on coding for fun. Okay, so these are all related to things you might add to your website here. I can uncheck that. I can see what's new in version six. You can see that there's actually 300 
new icons in version 6 that were not in version 5. You can see that there's a lot of variety here of our icons, but it is important to note that, yeah, these icons are always being updated, which is great. Now I want to look at the documentation a bit. So there is a lot of documentation here with CodePen. And specifically, I want to look at styling our icons. So I think we understand the basics. We just kind of went through that. I want to first touch on size here. So the great thing is this comes with, again, classes that are built into Font Awesome that will allow us to adjust our sizing. You can see that we have our extra small, which is 0.75 EM. Equivalent size in pixels is 12 pixels. So because this is a vector graphic, we're actually using the font size property in our CSS. So we can actually add a custom value and just target that font size property. But it does have some classes built in that will do that for you. And then they also have literal sizing. So we have FA. 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, etc. And you can see that that is the equivalent to 1em, 2em, 3em, 4em. So that's a great way to scale it very obviously according to our em property. So we're going to go ahead and try that now on our Twitter icon here. So we can just add fa-1x will do nothing, I just realized. And we'll do 2x, so you'll see that that will make it bigger. And then we do 5x, even bigger, and we can go all the way up to 10x. Okay, so you can see also that it's still just as sharp as when it was small. That is the benefit of using icons. They are vector graphics, and they will scale infinitely. As I mentioned, I can also target this using CSS. So if I did dot fa dash x dash Twitter, I can customize this further, just like I could customize font. So first thing I can do font size and I'll change this back to one X just to show, actually I will remove it altogether. And I can change the font size here now to be a hundred pixels and I can set it very, Specifically, anything I could use for font size, so I could also use like they were using 10 EM. And you see that that changes it a bit. So let's say I want 150 pixels. And I can also now change the font color, just like I would change a regular font. So I can say Dodger Blue. And I can change the font color just like that. So I can use any color for my icon as well, which is super helpful. Okay. Now, moving on, we've kind of gotten the grasp of sizing our icons. Let's go back to our docs here, and let's go back to styling our icons. And you can see that you can make icons fixed width so that they fit nicely together. You can add icons in a list. You can rotate them. You can animate them. You can stack them. And you can use Duotone if you have the pro account. But we're going to go ahead and just focus on animation right here. So we have a couple of examples. So I can go ahead and just copy this code snippet in here. And if we go back to our project, I'm just going to paste that in. And you can see that that's going to add a lot of different icons here that are pulsing. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see everything. So let's say I just want the uh, simple one here. You can also see in this example that it is actually putting this three times sizing on the parent and it's affecting everyone below. And this is an example of the beat animation, which makes sense in the context of a heart. It's a heart beating. And we have other examples here. So we have our fade examples. So this will fade these icons in and out. So you see we have it for kind of warnings here, and we also have it for a cursor. 
which we'll probably use later on actually for like an animated typewriter effect that you might have seen in other places. And let's see what else we have here. So I wanted to also show the shake animations here, which are kind of cool. And they're trying to give examples that are kind of context specific, things you might actually use it for. So this is more like, you know, an alarm going off or a bomb going off or the lock is, uh, if you tried to log in and it didn't work, let's maybe get rid of the bomb. We don't need that one. And lastly, I just wanted to show this spin icon animation as well. And so the great thing about these spin ones is that they can be used for a quick and easy loading spinner. I personally would use maybe these three to me are the ones that kind of look the best. I actually like the cog quite a lot for a loading spinner. Okay, and I think that that is a good overview of Fawn Awesome. We have touched on how to find our different icons, how to color them, how to change the sizing, and we've even experimented with some of the animations that are already included in Fawn Awesome. And there you have it, folks. A big thank you to Jacinto for guiding us through this lesson. Want to dive even deeper? Well, lucky for you, there's a whole lot more to learn in the complete CSS Bootcamp course, linked in the top right hand corner and in the description down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on future tutorials from Jacinto and other expert Zero to Mastery instructors. Keep coding, keep styling, and I'll see you in the next one.